It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about the retirement road trip. Yes, planning your next vacation is a lot like financial planning, but a little less fun. But we're going to talk about some of the similarities and things that you do to plan for your vacation that you should be doing to plan for your retirement. We're going to talk about those imperfect 401ks. You may have a lot of money in your old or current 401k. Bob and I are going to break down the good, the bad, the ugly when it comes to your actual retirement accounts. And we're going to talk about financial propaganda. What is some of the worst advice the financial media has been giving in the last couple of weeks? We're going to call it out. We're going to talk about things like interest rates, bond funds, and yes, annuities. We're going to tell you why you might not want to own an annuity here, but we're going to break it all down for you. So check it out. We've got a great show ahead. You know, Bob, in the famous words of Ralph Walter Emerson, life is a journey, not a destination. And I think Steven Tyler of Aerosmith said the same thing, but I feel like Ralph uh, said it first. I think it's fair to say the same thing can be said about retirement. Whether you're retired now or planning to retire, what needs to be on your retirement road trip checklist? Well, first of all, Ry, have you checked off the list for everything we need to do for our trip to Sicily next week? Drink a lot of wine, eat a lot of food. Yep, covered all the bases, Bob. We're good to go. All right. I don't think we can fail with that plan. But, <laughs> uh, you know, so it's a short term goal. And of course, planning has to be done. So, how's that the same as planning for a lifetime of retirement, Ry? Well, you know, the funny thing is they're very similar. And you always hear the statistic all the time that we tend to spend more time planning our vacation than our financial life, which is crazy, but it's true. And the reality of it is it's probably about the same effort. The only difference is a lot more fun to book a trip and plan it to Italy than it is your financial life. Well, it is very similar, Ry. First of all, you have to know where you're going, right? I mean, you have to know when you retire, how you're going to retire, where you're going to live. Um, so you need to have specific goals about your retirement. And then you also have to know how you're going to get there. Now, planning a trip to Sicily is easy. We got to get on a plane and fly over, you know, across the Atlantic to get there. But you know, there's a lot of different routes you can take to retirement. So planning does come into play. Well, it's kind of crazy if you think about it, the way we plan our investment. It's almost like we go on the website of the airline and we say, okay, you know, let's plan that flight, and we have no idea where we're going. It's really hard to pick which flight to pick, and that's kind of like how we plan for retirement. You know, we have all these investments. We have no idea what they're doing. We have no idea if they're going to get us to retirement or not. And it's just kind of crazy if you think about it. You know, Ryan, I'm seeing a lot of that now. A lot of, a lot of uh, you are coming in. We're going through your portfolios, going through your passive income streams. And, you know, there's a lot of mistakes you could make. If you don't claim Social Security properly, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars you could leave on the table. If you have a portfolio where you're so happy with the performance. Oh, my God, I got Amazon on my portfolio, Ryan. I made a lot of money, but there's no income. And, you know, you need to have a portfolio is going to generate a sustainable income in retirement. And I'll tell you, a lot of you are not positioned for that right now. Yeah, no, exactly right. And I think the first problem is just that. What's your destination? And your destination simply is, okay, this is when I want to retire or if I'm retired now, then what am I going to need in income? What do I have to replace when I stop working? What's that number look like? What are the things I want to do in retirement? So once you have a picture of what those things are, Bob, you can do what we call reverse engineer and then you can go back to like, I can book the flight because I know where I'm going. It's like, then I can start looking at my investments and decide how to structure them so that I can get to the goals that I've established. Well, you know what, Rye, here's where uh, professional advice is so critical. You know, we're going to go to Sicily, right? And we're going to have yes, the are. best tour guide in the history of the planet, Uncle Al, right? I, I mean, mean, who thought you would go to Sicily to see Greek temples? <laughs> it's true. It's true. We, we hard to believe that the Greeks were there. They were everywhere. Um, and that's Everywhere. what Uncle Al is going to uh, take us to see. That's one of the big things on the trip. And that's when you're talking about retirement planning. It is very complex. There's a lot of issues where, yeah, sure, you can go out and get the uh, latest book or, you know, the guide to how to see Sicily or how to retire comfortably. But, you know, there's a lot of details where you need an expert to point you out to the decisions you should be making right now and to help you make sure you make those decisions properly because there's a lot of stress in making some of these decisions and they can be very costly if you don't make them correctly. 
Right. If you have a pro like Uncle Al who knows the ins and outs, it takes a lot of the stress out of it because then you get there. And that's the other thing with retirement, right? Once you get to retirement, well, that's another 20, 25, 30 years you could potentially be retired. That's a whole other thing you have to plan for. So it's not like, okay, this is my retirement date. I'm good. Everything's done. No. Now you get another 30 years to plan for. And that's really why, again, it's the journey, not a destination. You know, Ryan, you're so right. I mean, you just hit the nail on the head. I mean, let's face it. We get to the airport next Saturday and the pilot comes out and says, uh, you know, hey, thanks for choosing, uh, you know, not so good airlines. And by the way, Rye, we have a 50-50 shot of you getting <laughs> to Sicily alive. Are you going to get on that plane? I'm probably not, Bob. <laughs> you know, I like to you roll know, the dice. Me I'm neither. I'm going to sit in the lounge with you. If you're thinking right now, I have a plan that's got a 50-50 shot, you know, being a high quality plan that's going to get me to my goal. If I got a portfolio that hasn't been proven, right? There's no proven track record. I'm just kind of winging it. You know, you've got a problem. You know, you want to have a 100% chance of achieving your goals, net of inflation, net of taxation with a portfolio with a proven track record. Well, that's the thing. It's kind of like, you know, once the pilot sets up where he's going, puts the coordinates in, a lot of it is actually on autopilot. You can do the same thing with your retirement. You know, you can figure out how to generate a stream of income that fills in that income gap that's recurring every year where you're not relying on the ups and downs of the market. Just looking at taxes, tweaking your portfolio to make it more tax efficient. These are things that are on autopilot once you set them up. It's just more money in your pocket. There's so many little things that you can do to tweak things to your benefit. And you want the highest odds of success. Like you can't screw up retirement. You know, right? Cruise control is the right term. You know, when I get on that plane next week, I want to sit up front. I don't want to be in the pilot seat that up front. I want to be up front in first class. And I want it on cruise control because once we've done all the hard work of planning, I want to go over and enjoy this trip. And that's the same thing. You need to have a plan that allows you to put it on cruise control, enjoy your lifestyle, enjoy the rest of your life, have a lifetime of income you can't outlive, work with, you know, play with your grandchildren, take trips every year. All it takes is a few minutes of your time. And a lot of you aren't doing it right now. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. So Bob, as we've discussed a lot on this show, your 401k can be your most powerful retirement savings tool, but it's not perfect. So I thought we could talk about some of the weaknesses that you should be aware of in your 401k or your 403b, TSP, 457 plan, whatever kind of retirement plan you actually have. You know, the, the, the number one weakness of every 401k plan are the fees, the costs, the administrative costs. And they have to have administrative costs because it's not a plan just built for you, the employee. The employer has to build a plan that incorporates everybody you sit next to, everybody in your organization. And you have to account for things like loans. And, you know, there's a lot of overhead that, you know, sometimes you have to bear as the employee. The employer should bear those costs, but not every plan is the same. It's hard to believe, right? Your company might not be picking up those costs for you, um, which is probably the case, actually, because most times the, the company says, oh, well, the employees can pay for that. And the other thing we find, Bob, is those costs are typically hidden in the plan. Like You have to be a detective to figure out where all those fees are in your 401k plan. Um, so a lot of times it can be cost you more. So especially if you don't work for a company anymore and you still have an old 401k out there, you're being very, very benevolent to your former colleagues that are still benefiting from the fact that you're picking up the tab on some of those admin costs. Yeah, that's a big problem that I see, right, with these 401ks is that it's, you know, it's not the core business of your company and your, your management team is focused on keeping the doors open. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like a box they check. Oh, 401ks in place. Okay, fine. Menus in place. All right, put it on autopilot. 
I mean, almost every plan we look at is out of date. They still have these old fashioned, high cost, very costly mutual funds uh, in the portfolio. And the menu should be a lot bigger, don't you think? Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, I mean, talking about the most old school thing ever, a lot of these 401k plans, because a lot of times they were probably put in place many years ago and the options for these plans have changed a lot. And we've talked about this a lot on the show. We don't love mutual funds, right? I mean, typically the fees are higher. Uh, the money manager who manages those funds is not that good. <laughs> you know, it's actually pretty lousy. Yeah. And to your point, you're very limited in your options. And a lot of times you're building up a lot of money in this plan. It's not the best place for it to be with the limited options and the higher admin costs and mutual fund costs. Yeah. And the thing that blows my mind is the bigger the company, the, the more blue chip, the more Fortune 500 a company is, the more limited the menu of choices happens to be. It's, it's almost as if they don't want to have anybody make money in their retirement plan. Now, don't get me wrong. You should contribute no matter what. But you also have a voice. A lot of times we're helping you go back to your management team and saying, hey, I demand a better menu. And, um, you know, it's not that hard to do. Yeah, well, a lot of times our employers don't listen to us. <laughs> Let's be honest about <laughs> it. And that being the case, you know, there's other options too. Well, first off, if it's an old 401k, you can roll it into an individual retirement account for yourself. And then you can give yourself what we call a supermarket of investment options, which is a much better deal. But a lot of times, Bob, if you're over 59 and a half, you can actually roll money out of your 401k plan into an individual retirement account for yourself and invest that money the way you want to, which might be better suited for your needs. Yeah, and that's the key, right? You have to be over 59 and a half to have that in-service distribution, as they call it. Um, but, you know, if you're younger, you know, the thing that's critical is that you're still managing that portfolio, those investments in your 401k in concert with money you have outside of the 401k because, you know, I want to let everybody in on a dirty little secret, right? All these here, 401ks, Bob. 403bs, 457s have evil bond funds as their only investment choice in a conservative investment. Yes. And you know, we hate bond funds. Dislike or strongly Evil. dislike. You should never use the word hate. But the point is too, right? If you're building up a big, big nest egg now with your 401k or large balance in there, you don't want to have the whole thing at risk. You need to start protecting some of it. And a lot of times your only options for safety are things like a stable value fund where you're earning like a 1%, 2% interest rate with fees, which is a lousy return. Or what you just mentioned, Bob, bond funds. Why don't we like bond funds? Well, we know bond funds don't have a maturity date. The cost internally are high. I just reviewed a 401k for a client the other day, and the fees, the internal fees are higher than the current yield of the bond portfolio. So you might as well sit in cash. It's a terrible investment. Yeah, and you need to have protection in your portfolio. You know, I had a client come in the other day and he's asking me, well, you know, how do you do it, Ryan? You know, everyone in the news is talking about a recession. And I said, oh my God, that's all they can talk about. How are we going to protect ourselves if the market pulls back? And that's where it's so critical, the way you position your safe money. And things like bonds can be very good protection if you own your bonds, Bob, but not in a bond fund because a bond fund has the risk of the stock market. You know, Ryan, that's what every one of you are hearing right now. Oh, there's going to be a recession. Half the rich people in the country are going to cash. They're going to impeach the president. No, they're not going to impeach the president. They're going to impeach the Ukrainian president. There's all <laughs> this fake news. There's all this noise out there. And it only matters if you're trying to outperform the market. It doesn't matter if you're focusing on you know, retiring. All you need to do is have a plan that incorporates every what if out there. No one can predict what's unknowable, right? Last I checked. Yeah. And that's why, again, it's so critical. Have the right safe investments in your portfolio. Because if you don't here, you can put yourself at unnecessary risk. And we're seeing that right now, especially with bond funds, because so much money has gone into these bond funds. If interest rates go up, there's going to be very little protection in these bond funds. And that's why you probably bought them in the first place for protection, which they don't actually provide. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish 
to 555-888 or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, I know you and I had articles flying back and forth this week. I think you sent me like 100 articles this week, which I did get through, but it took a lot of time. Um, <laughs> so what did you find this week? What do we What do we want to chat about today in the world of financial propaganda? You know, you're right. I did send you about 100 articles this week that you and I went over and I'd say 50% were positive, 50% were negative. But, you know, all these negative nabobs are out there, you know, promoting financial propaganda, you know, creating fear has led to one thing. And that's what this one article pointed out. A lot of you have missed the greatest bull market in history because you've pulled $246 billion out of the stock market over the last 12 months. And last I checked, Rod, year to date, it's one of the best years we've ever had in the market. Yeah, and the S&P 500 is up almost 20%. And this is the reason why you need a game plan, because obviously everyone selling out of the market right now doesn't have a game plan. Because if you're just you know, selling because of fear and things like that, that's not a game plan, Bob. And, and right, it's not even just the stock market. I mean, all of our bond portfolios are at all-time record highs. And you know, you even had people who don't even think they're propagandists, and they think they're helping people. Like, uh, let's take the chairman of... J.P. Morgan Bank, Jamie Dimon. This time last year, he said, oh, 10-year Treasury yield's going to be 4 If it's not 4%, it's going to be 5%. Scared the daylights out of my clients. And here we are with a 1.5% 10-year Treasury. I don't care who it is, Rye. You can't know what's unknowable. You need to have a plan. You need to invest to stay away from all this fear-mongering. Well, it's true. There's no certainty when you're invested. And I met with a couple this past week. And the one gentleman is probably close to his 60s. He's ready to retire. He's got 100% of his money in the stock market. And I'm like, man, this is like financial suicide. If the market goes down, you are, in lack of a better way, you're screwed, <laughs> which he kind of mm -hmm. laughed and said, I know. That's why I'm talking to you. Uh, but I said, <laughs> well, you know, we should have some money in bonds. But he's like, you know, but interest rates are going to go up. And you might be right, Bob, they might, but we don't know when they're going to go up. And that's the thing. You mm -hmm. can't guess these things because interest rates could stay low for a while. Nobody really knows. No, that's why you have to have a bond portfolio where you have permanence and definition, Rye. You love those two terms? I mean, ma music to my ears. And if you're planning on retiring, there should be music to your ears as well. Well, you know what permanence is, is a fixed income, is a fixed coupon. In other words, a lot of times when you have a fixed income investment, it's not fixed. You don't know what your yield's going to be. So in order to have a bond that's truly fixed income, that be truly permanent and definite is it has to have a fixed coupon, a fixed rate of return, an interest rate that you're going to earn no matter what, and a date where you get your money back. Because you know what, Rye? Interest rates are going to go up one day, and you want to have money coming due so you can take advantage of it. Well, that's it. That's right. So it's kind of like plan for everything, not just one thing, right? Because yes, you know, rates may, may not go up, but they might go up, and you got to have everything kind of covered, all your bases covered. And that's one of the reasons why you need to really look at the risk of your overall portfolio. And you have to ask yourself, like, have I put my portfolio under the stress test? Do I know under different scenarios what it's going to do? That's the value of having looking at your portfolio all in one place, You know, looking at the whole picture. You know, it blows my mind, Rye. This article said, how can the stock market go up when all the retail investors are selling? Well, you know, while retail investors were selling $246 billion out of stocks in the last 12 months, yep. there was $2 trillion being purchased by corporations. You know what I always say? When they're buying, you better be buying. When they're selling, then it's time to get out. You're right, Bob. It's, it's amazing that the smart money or the big money right now has been buying stock, yet retail investors have been selling stock. And that's a good sign too, that well, if you've got companies buying their own stock, they probably think their stock right now is a good buy, not a bad buy. That's a positive sign, not a negative. Uh, another article Who do you I think found... knows more about their own company, right? The company buying their own company or somebody writing for the Wall Street Journal? <laughs> <laughs> I think the person running the company. Just a wild guess. I, I found another article you actually sent me this week, Bob, which goes back to what we talked about last week. I'm going to use the A word again. Annuity. Uh-oh. 
Uh, oh. most in, oh, I know. I'm sorry. I, I know this is, a, uh, this is a classy show. We don't like to <laughs> <laughs> throw uh, obscene words like this around. But this is a great article. It's called Why Most Annuities Aren't Inflation Adjusted and Why That's a Problem. And this is exactly what we talked about on our show last week is when you have an annuity and it pays you a fixed amount of income every year, which sounds great, that's not great because your cost of living is going up. And that annuity income stream is going to be the same year after year. It's amazing, Rod. You know, inflation is insidious. It's hidden, but it's real. You know, the cost of everything goes up every single year. You know, if, if we just stay at this low inflation rate, you're going to have, you know, 40% more costs in 25 years with low inflation. God forbid inflation yeah. comes back to what it was in my lifetime. Yeah, and just to put that another way, the million dollars you have today is only worth six hundred thousand dollars in twenty five years. That is crazy. So why, why is it? So why are these annuities being sold? There's only four percent that have a cost of living adjustment. Why aren't they being sold with some type of protection for you, the investor? Because it's not a good for the insurance company. It means they have to pay you more over time. They don't want to do that. Uh, so, and that's really important because right now, Bob, we're living longer. If you look at life expectancy back in 1969, it was 70 years old. Well, it's 79 years today. So, more than ever, you're going to need an income stream that goes up over time. And most annuities just don't cover that, which is crazy. Yeah. And if you're wondering, where's all the inflation? Have you booked an airline ticket lately? Have you gone to the doctor? Have you ordered your medicine? I mean, medical costs are going through the roof, cost of flying is going up. You know, the economy's booming and people are spending money. And guess what? The people that sell stuff to you are taking advantage of it. Inflation is headed higher. Yeah, and that's just such a critical part of your portfolio. You have to ask yourself, not only do I have an income plan, like I have enough income coming in in retirement, but is my income going up in retirement? And if you haven't accounted for that, that's going to be a big problem down the line because your cost of living is definitely going up. You know, Ryan, the best, the best hedge there is against inflation our dividends and dividends just hit an all time record high this quarter. They've been going up every year, you know, since the Great Recession. You got to have dividends in your portfolio. You've got to hedge for inflation. I don't mean go out and buy gold, right? You don't want to buy gold. You want to invest in financial assets that grow as you spend. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.